Hi, I'm Josh Gallagher. I'm Mediacom APAX Chief Product and Growth Officer, and I'm based in Singapore. So I think the, the general definition of social commerce is including products or services offered directly on social platforms or by clicking links on those social platforms that lead to a retailer site for direct purchase. But what I think separates social commerce from other types of direct selling is that when it's direct action that comes from a social relationship that's built up between a brand or an influencer and that consumer. As we shift from advertising to commerce to conversation to commerce or even content to commerce, the power of distinctly social commerce comes from that unplanned exposure where consumers discover new trending products from influencers to peers. And I think that's what really defines social commerce that leverages influence, whether that's paid or organic, to capture consumers' attention through any social or e-commerce touchpoint. So I think social commerce is definitely challenging the mainstay formats of old. Uh, it's grown uh, as a result of changing consumer behaviour, really, where the utility of product is as much of importance as what a product says about people when they purchase that product. So I'm not sure if social commerce is the future of shopping in that it will be the only form of shopping, but it's quickly becoming a format that is having the biggest ability to influence purchase in the same way that physical shopping did. It really replicates the same experience that we have when we go into a store. Consumers don't just want to buy a product. You want to have that experience. You want to engage with like-minded individuals, even if that's just the salesperson. And you want to share your perspective for immediate impact. It's the same thing as if you walk around a mall showing off your purchases. You can do that now with social commerce via social media. Plus, you've got new innovative formats like live streaming. They've mimicked real-world purchases where you can see the product in a much more real setting, but also then speak with an expert. But the larger influence of social commerce comes from that line between where consumer and creator is becoming increasingly blurred. You're not just buying from a salesperson or just clicking on a sale. The other side is, is someone that you trust or could even be your friend. So maybe not all brands need a social commerce strategy, um, but definitely some categories like health and beauty, consumer electronics, et cetera, are much more advanced. The key for me when I talk to brands and when I think about social commerce is to listen to your customer. If they're already talking about you, your products or your category online, or if there's a need for consumers to talk to you about your product in the consumer journey, then there's the ability to have a social commerce element to your activity. It's becoming incredibly important to break marketplace algorithms as well. So as opposed to just listing your product where it's a really big searching environment, you're at the behest of that behavior from both consumers and from your customers like marketplaces. You're at the behest of the algorithm and how much you can spend to beat the algorithm. Social commerce adds a different element, the ability to be creative, to deliver brand experiences through new formats like live streaming, video, uh, or even live chat. And this is the key inflection point for me where creativity within social commerce and within commerce starts to play a disproportionate role. So for people to find your brand, they've got to know your brand, but they've also got to like your brand. And this allows brands to communicate their distinctive value at that point of sale in a place that people are asking for. It requires a little bit of a different marketplace strategy sometimes that really harnesses the brand stories that you've invested so much money in above the line to spark preference or even to make sure purchase within that brand experience on the digital shelf is something that converts every time. So I think the main challenge is understanding your customer. We need to think about commerce less as the end of a purchase journey, um, that's the last click on the media plan, or even just a new set of formats to understand, but it's a consumer experience. And for me, that's a strategic challenge that we have. So there's three questions that I like to ask. How can brands beat the algorithms through creative and get ahead of them by shifting from just product description, so just describing your product online, to product experiences where people are mimicking those physical shopping behaviours that they have? 
The second one is how can being relevant to consumers better serve their expectations through areas like conversation that they would have in a physical store? And then the final one is how do I create real magic in conversion moments? That can be by using data and technology in really new creative ways through things like chat or through things like personalization. So I think the short answer to this is yes. That's less dictated by the format of the needs of the brand, but by the ongoing sales cycle that we found ourselves in. And especially at this time of year, it feels like a mega sale every month or, or every few weeks at the moment. But the long answer is it depends. If it's your first time using a new fa format or coming into social commerce, then choose a moment that your product can deliver a disproportionately great experience for your customers. So what I know is that social commerce is in a really great trajectory. It'll definitely be stealing attention from other channels, but this could also include physical shopping where the experience is critical. So it's not just about other e-commerce areas or other online areas where it's gonna take attention away. It's really a totally different way about thinking about the consumer and the consumer journey online. So I see it as enhancing the experience. We're shifting away from what was a mentality of search first, but social commerce has the ability to be the first really powerful interaction someone has with a brand. And for that reason, I think it's additive. And I think in a consumer world, thinking in silos, whether that's tactics or channels um, or even different products, that can be really dangerous. So I think it's additive. Yes, it's going to steal attention, but in a good way. What we look for when selecting a social commerce partner is usually someone that can deliver end to end. Where we've seen great results on those social platforms is where we've been able to contain the consumer experience and give them a great experience, whether that's starting with a live streaming or live shopping event to start off with, being able to then respond to that person in real time through chat, uh, and then finally close the sale from a purchase perspective. So when we start to think about the partner that we're using, someone that can deliver that end-to-end, -end, especially in really short sales cycles, is someone that we prefer to use. Mm -hmm.